Hi there. Well, the point behind doing these um, couple of talks is just to give you a bit more detail than perhaps you're able to get from the shorter webinar we've got recorded. Um, and obviously it can be a little bit um, more challenging at the moment to do a full consult. So um, this is here if you want to have it um, and obviously you can dip in and out of it. This is my favourite slide for um, any kind of online uh, meeting or webinar. Um, obviously, I'd love to share them, but, you know, health and safety uh, means I can't share my data. So what are we going to cover? We're going to look at what is trigeminal mediated head shaking? Why do horses get it? Who is affected and how to make a diagnosis? And we're going to have a look at what we know. But in that, we've got to flag what we don't know, because unfortunately, the don't knows are much, much more um, than the nose. We're going to look at current best diagnostic protocol. We're going to consider the limitations of that and also potentially consider the future. So what is trigeminal mediated head shaking, we ask? Well, it is perfectly normal for a horse to shake its head. And there's lots and lots of reasons why a horse will shake its head. Largely, it doesn't matter. But how often does a horse shaking its head become a problem? So we wanted to find out how common is head shaking um, to a point that it is not normal. Um, we sampled a thousand um, plus UK horse owners who reported that um, of those 4% reported that their horses had shaken their heads more than normal. And a quarter of those to a degree as to require veterinary attention. So you're looking at about 40,000 horses in the UK that shake their heads more than they should. Um, and of those about 10,000, then actually it's, it's so bad they need to see a vet for it. Um, and so we, we published that in 2018. But what's trigeminal mediated head shaking? Because as I said, there's lots of reasons you can shake your head. Now, what are the signs of trigeminal mediated head shaking? These, these guys have predominantly vertical head shaking, sharp vertical twitches and flicks. They perhaps look like a bee's gone up their nose. They've had an electric shock. And it's usually accompanied by signs of nasal irritation. So they'll snort, twitch their lips, rub the nose, and some will even strike at the nose. And it's both sides of the nose that's affected. There doesn't seem to be um, a, a, a physical stimulus. So there is no bee um, or electric shock, but they act like there is one. Um, some of these can actually shake very, very violently and that can leave them unsafe to ride or handle. They're worse to exercise crucially any exercise so it doesn't matter if they're ridden or lunged or free scored once they exercise they will get worse they can also be affected at rest but those are usually still worse at exercise some of the horses are only affected seasonally and if so most commonly in the spring and summer not always some of them are worse in the winter um, why, why are we looking at 25 to 64 percent at such a big gap, isn't it? And that depends whether the question was asked, is your horse completely better out of season or just a lot better? So um, if you're looking for horses to be completely better, it's about 25 percent. So no signs of head shaking when they're off season um, and 64 percent of them will improve in an off season. And then obviously you've got a whole chunk of horses who are just as bad all year round. Anecdotally, some are only affected when exercised outdoors, not indoors, and you can take them outside and ride them outside and they shake and you bring them inside and they stop. And then you take them outside and they start again. Um, and some will be out worse at hacking or near trees, some are worse in the rain. So different horses will have different environments um, in which they are worse. And environment is tied into trigeminal mediated head, head shaking, although we don't quite know how. So how do these horses look? This is a classic trigeminal mediated head shaker. Vertical head shaking, snorting. I haven't got the sound on, but you can see him do some snorting. Um, twitching of his lip, um, sharp vertical movements as well. Um, he is a pretty unhappy chappy. And oh look, this guy does the same. And they are usually really classic. So they've normally read a textbook on what does a trigeminal mediated head shaker show to demonstrate the problem? Um, they will, though, vary in severity and they'll vary in severity between individuals and also between different days um, and different moments. So they will vary in severity, but the actual signs for trigeminal mediated head shakers are usually very consistent. And here we have another one.
and this uh, lovely mare, she really top show jumper, affected at rest um, so badly. And I mean, you can hardly begin to imagine what she was like out of a stable. She couldn't really come out. Um, it was so much, much worse if any exercise was done. And you can't get a lot worse than that um, as it is in the stable, can you? So as I said, they're usually classic. Now, think very hard if they're not. And that's usually a good thing. So if you've got non-classic signs, hopefully you don't have trigeminal mediated head shaking because actually you want another cause for your head shaking largely. You are almost always better off if we can find something different. There are, however, some variations. So there are some horses that have photic head shaking, so they seem to re respond to light. Now, quite often people think they might be photic, but it's actually very hard to, to remove light from other environmental influences like heat, um, flies, pollen, all of that kind of thing that could be contributing. So we don't know how the environment contributes. But if you've got a horse that is triggered just by light, you should be able to fix them just by effectively putting on some sunglasses. So um, a sun, a, a fly hat. Um, and you can compete, as this lovely horse is showing us here, with a hat on and you can compete um, even up to Grand Prix, as this guy does within the UK with one of these on, um, to go international. He has to wear um, tinted contact lenses if he if he needs them. And actually, this guy manages without. But we, we have gone through a phase of trying tinted contact lenses with him. Um, some of them will, will, will do only in the rain. And I still think they, they somehow end up as trigeminal mediated head shakers. But I, I suspect I'm not quite as good at treating them. We don't have very much data. We might be dealing with a slightly different subset. Some just show nasal irritation and nose dragging, and I'm not quite sure how those fit in. Um, this mare is one and, you know, she's going around on the lunge and she rubs her nose on, on the ground and then stretches. And you wouldn't think much um, of it. Lots of horses will do that on the lunge, um, except this mare can't stop um, and there is nothing you can do to make her stop. And if you try and ride her, even though you can, you can see this is a nice horse, um, she will still try and do that ridden. This horse, and hopefully you can see that video, okay, it's going to come out a little bit narrow. Um, nice Avento, um, quite young, um, nicely ridden, vertical head shaking. But if you hop off and lunge her, she's absolutely fine. And then you can get back on her and she starts to head shake. And, and we did this uh, several times um, on this one occasion to prove that it happened when she was ridden. And um, as you saw from the previous video, she's ridden very nicely. It's certainly not a rider problem, um, but she turned out to have um, some orthopedic disease. And that was what was causing the head shaking. This horse, again, not classic, is he? he yes, he's, he's doing the vertical head shaking and the rubbing. Um, and he's so bad, he's, he's doing it at rest, but um, he's only rubbing that left side. And it's normally both sides that are affected. And this horse actually had um, inflammation of the trigeminal nerve, and we're going to talk about that in more detail. Um, but he had that uh, due to a tooth root abscess. So um, we had a pathology to treat. And obviously that was on the left hand side, the side he was rubbing. So he is showing signs of nerve pain, as we think trigeminal mediated head shakers do. But he had a physical cause for that nerve pain, whereas we don't find a physical damage to horses with trigeminal mediated head shaking. This guy, again, he is yeah, shaking his head. Uh, he's rubbing his nose. He looks quite unhappy about eating his hay, but obviously he has to eat because he's hungry. Um, and he actually was fine ridden. So again, um, you've got some differences there. And this horse, again, inflammation of the nerve secondary to dental disease and, and largely dental disease doesn't give you inflammation of the trigeminal nerve which is the main sensory nerve to the face um, but it can do and if you have got nerve pain as a horse this is what you try and tell us how, how you try and tell us so horses with trigeminal mediated head shaking also seem to be suffering nerve pain the problem is we just don't know why so what is nerve pain and otherwise known as neuropathic pain it's where you've got a problem with signals from the nerve um, and people report a varying severity of tingling, pins and needles, burning, shooting, stabbing and electric shock like pain. So um, all those lovely long words at the bottom just mean basically changes in your levels of pain sensation, how you feel, what you feel and that you can feel inappropriately. Um, and certainly um, I've worked on head shaking for some years, but five years ago I 
may have come off my uh, silly young warm blood dressage horse um, and shattered my leg. And I can confirm neuropathic pain um, does give you a varying severity of tingling, pins and needles, burning, shooting, stabbing and electric shock like pain. It is a lot better now, but it is certainly not normal. Um, and it, it was quite, actually quite um, unpleasant, but remarkable to be able to experience what we think um, the horses are experiencing. So why are we getting pain in this nerve um, when we can't find anything wrong with it? So all we do know is that this nerve has become sensitised, so it fires at too low a threshold. What do I mean by that? If you look at your hand at the moment, your hand is covered in bacteria, but fortunately you can't feel them crawling around there. Um, but if you tap your hand, you can feel that. So there is a, a particular point at which your sensory nerves go, I'm going to bother telling the brain about this sensation um, and what happens in the face the, 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 in the face of the trigeminal nerve um, of head shakers of trigeminal mediated head shakers is that it's firing at an inappropriately low threshold so it's giving the horse way too much information um, how do we know that that's through these tests done uh, called somatosensory evoked potentials there's an image of this horse um, having one here under anesthesia um, looks all very complicated and it is um, but it does prove that their nerve is about 10 times more sensitive than a normal horse but we don't know why what we do know um, is that once it fires it fires normally um, which fits with there not being um, a physical problem in the nerve from a inflammation or a growth or anything like that or a loss of myelin um, and there's no difference between left and right sides and these horses do look um, like both sides are affected as well clinically so that does make sense one thing that they did do was test a seasonally affected head shaker when he was in remission and now at that point he had a normal threshold for activation what we need to know is whether is seasonal head shaking something different or is seasonal head shakers able to switch between having an abnormal nerve and a normal functioning nerve and that's what we think but we can only prove that by testing the same horse twice now because the horses have to be anesthetized for this they this horse was that they tested were tested in the us um they were donated to a research study so um instead of just being euthanized because of his head shaking because that's what was going to happen um he was anesthetized had the tests and then overdosed on the table so we couldn't then retest him um when he was out of season but that we do need to find that out but obviously um, the horse's welfare is paramount which might mean that we can't um why do they get a reduced threshold we don't know and that's a real problem because we don't know why and we don't know how and if we knew those we might be able to treat it or prevent it or manage it better but we don't know this is some of the research behind that we don't know why horses get it that's just a short one um but what we know the nerve functions normally sorry functions abnormally but is structurally normal and that might mean that we can reverse it so a switch has been flicked we don't know which switch and we don't know how but we know we can potentially flick it back so about five percent of horses will spontaneously recover anyway and some horses don't head shake half of the year so yeah that makes sense doesn't it that maybe that we can flick this switch back um but it would be an awful lot easier if we knew what the switch was and what had flicked it in the first place it's always good to look at what's done with people and there are certainly um, clinical similarities to trigeminal neuralgia and cluster headache in people but i cannot find an exact parallel condition um we've explored similarities to trigeminal neuralgia quite closely and i'm hoping to start exploring similarities to cluster headache um, in some studies that we hope to do um, with the cases at bnw with owner's consent um it is not caused by herpes virus um, and that is a common common it's still quite uncommon um you'll be relieved here but a common issue cause of um orofacial pain in people um moving on who's affected worldwide developed countries probably i don't know that we see it in developing countries why is it an environment thing um is it that they mostly are perhaps if they're working horses they're working in walk um and maybe they're not so aggravated then um difficult to know one to four point six percent of the uk equine population it is acquired as a young adult so you're not born with it you get it and you're normally a young adult and if you're in your late teens and you haven't 
to become a head shaker you're not going to now uh or become a trigeminal mediated head shaker i should add because of course you can head shake for lots of other reasons um average age of onset is six but there is a really really wide range there are more geldings than mares but it's a little bit difficult to tease that apart from the fact that we see more sport horse geldings anyway in a hospital situation um, if we when we looked back at our owner questionnaire so you're looking at horses that um, weren't just in a sort of referral hospital population where the 70 to 75 percent data comes out then it is much more evenly matched between sexes and now we know neuropathic pain in people can have a bit of a sex bias it's slightly more, more women affected um, but there's slightly more geldings we're not sure what's going on there whether it's real or not but it certainly warrants further investigation any breed and probably any use um more general riding um but not compared against the population and and maybe fewer racehorses um but those are often a bit younger aren't they um and they might have other factors limiting investigation that might be why we're not seeing so many racehorses we certainly see x racehorses um there is no evidence of direct heritability which is something people ask quite a lot um if my mare or stallion head shakes or has trigeminal mediated head shaking can we breed from them um, there's certainly no evidence of direct heritability, um, but it isn't specifically studied. Um, possibly epigenetics. So is there something that um, means that one horse exposed to a particular environment is more likely to become a head shaker? Um, possibly. And again, that's something that we would like to further explore. It is acquired, they get it, they're not born with it, and there is some environmental interaction in them getting it, but it is very complex. It is not a direct allergy, and it's not directly that a particular environment will make horses head shake. Um, but there is something, um, and if only I knew what. So how do we make a diagnosis of trigeminal mediated head shaking? So currently it's a diagnosis of exclusion. Um, they look like they have trigeminal mediated head shaking and we can't find a physical cause. Um, and that's where we end up. Um, but we're quite likely to, to overdiagnose. Now, if you look back at work that was done in 1987 at Bristol, 98% of horses presenting to a hospital, the Bristol Hospital, um, for head shaking investigation went home with a diagnosis of trigeminal mediated head shaking. It was called idiopathic head shaking. Um, if I look at my numbers now, I'm looking at about 90%. Um, we've got better diagnostics, we've got CT, we've got a bit more knowledge now, um, but it is still only exclusion. Maybe there's a role for running these somatosensory evoked potentials as well um, as all the other tests and finding out if a particular horse's nerve is sensitised. The problem is it's under general anaesthetic, so um, I think we've got to do a bit of a cost benefit analysis there. Is, is it the right thing for the horse as an individual? maybe not um, it would be good to have that data um, but at the moment um, I'll hold fire on using it um, for diagnosis is it worth making a diagnosis so if you think your horse is a trigeminal mediated head shaker and you've seen a bunch of videos and they all kind of look the same and if your horse looks like that are you better to spend your money on treatment than on diagnostics to tell you what you know already now almost any diagnosis is better so take the 10% chance and the 10% chance is in a hospital population. So there's far more horses that head shake, even if they look quite classic for trigeminal mediated head shaking that have another problem that don't come to a hospital because the owner will have a look and quite rightly fix something and um, do some research and change something and see if that's better. Um, if that doesn't work, they'll talk to their rain vet who may also then fix something out in the field. So we're only getting horses referred to hospital who have quite a high likelihood of being trigeminal mediated. And even then we find 10% with something else. So I think it is important to explore it as um, and, and, and try and get a proper diagnosis. So little case here, we've got Bernie, who is um, absolutely adorable, um, somewhat of a cheeky little monkey, um, an eight year old New Forest gelding. He was used for long hacks in the New Forest and they'd owned him for four years. So you know, Bernie was well known um, to his owner. Um, but very recently, so not for four years, but recently, um, he was showing his, uh, episodes of violent vertical head shaking. Now, they only happened when he was out hacking and not in the arena. And we did say what should happen at any exercise, shouldn't it? But he did it when he was out on ride and lead, um, which so it's not it's not a rider thing. Right. Um, no nasal irritation and always on the turn for home. So he does, he's not classic, but but some things might be right. 
Um, now, we found no gross pathology that would cause head shakers. We didn't find a physical cause for it. So we said, well, is it orthopedic pain? Let's be sure. So we had a butte trial and it made no difference at all. Now, Bernie was a smart cookie and we said, like, I think he's just taking the mic. Um, but we can't be 100% sure. So actually, what we're going to do when he starts to do that is pop him into a shoulder in um, or a leg yield and let's see what he thinks about that. Um, and Bernie's super smart. And I think it took three <laughs> three goes of this before he just went, oh, it's just too much work. Um, I'll, I'll just get him nicely. Um, so it was nice to prove that Bernie didn't have a problem um, and that is always a much better outcome. So how do we make a diagnosis? So we've already said that, that they look classic um, and that's the most important bit is, is looking at them, watching them. So talking to the to, to you guys, talking to the owners, finding out about the horse um, and watching them. And you are asked to bring um, several videos with you when you come in for your consult. Um, and I think that's really important. Um, and again, think very hard if they're not classic. Because this is how they look. Just in case you needed a reminder. So we'll find out age, um, breed, sex, that kind of thing, when shaking occurs. So are they doing it um, just when they're ridden? Are they doing it on the lunge as well? Um, do they do it in the stable? Do they do it in the field? What type of shaking? Up and down, side to side, round and round, one side worse than the other. And if they have had um, a butte trial, did they get better because um, orthopedic pain, musculoskeletal pain or responds to butte? Sometimes, not always, but sometimes neuropathic pain never does. Allergies respond to steroids. Neuropathic pain doesn't. So again, if they've had a course of perhaps of inhaled steroids, um, what happened then? Did they get better or not? Um, and are they better with a nose net? And we will talk about nose nets in more detail later. And again, you'll be asked to have tried three, more or less, three different types of nose net before your appointment. I then grade them um, to try and just make outcomes more objective. And I made up this grading system and therefore I feel I can be criticised for it. Um, it isn't great, um, but I think it's the best I can do. Why is it not great? At first glance, it looks OK, doesn't it? So a zero, you're not you're not head shaking. A one, you're head shaking a bit, but you can still be ridden. Two, you're head shaking so much that you can't. Um, and a three out of three, you're head shaking even at rest. Where the lines get blurred is where a, a, a one out of three in what would be in a, in a hacking horse can make a two out of three in a dressage horse. So a little bit of head shaking that the horse isn't distressed about. Um, perhaps it's in the mild tingling pins and needles end of things. Um, and the horse is fine and just shakes a little bit and snorts a little bit and is rideable. Um, and welfare's not compromised, but he can't be a top dressage horse because you can't do that in a dressage chest. So he depending on his job, he might be a one in three or a two in three. And that and that's where it goes wrong with my, my grading system. So I'm, I'm happy to um, take advice on how to improve that. So after we've looked at the horse and said, yeah, do you know, uh, this horse really might have trigeminal mediated head shaking. The next stage is potentially proving that the horse is shaking because his face hurts. It won't tell us why his face hurts, but potentially proving that he shakes because his face hurts. So you guys are used to lameness investigations. You put local anaesthetic around nerves and find out at which point the horse stops head shaking. And that lets you know um, more or less where the, the location of the pain is, but again, not why. So the nerve work in question is this um, shade in this picture here. We're largely looking at the top branch that comes out of the brain uh, and then runs through this canal in the horse's head. So it goes in through the little hole just under the eye. Um, and then comes out sort of near the nose. Um, so we can block it in two different places. So one is put the needle by the nose. Very easy to do, um, but it only blocks a tiny part of the, of, the, of the nerve. It's not very helpful. Or we can go further back um, near the eye, but that's where it all becomes rather harder. So what we found um, is that if your horse stops head shaking after you've put local anaesthetic around the nerve, it tells you that, yes, your horse is head shaking because it's got face pain, um, but doesn't tell you why he's got face pain. If your horse doesn't stop head shaking, it actually doesn't advance it at all, um, particularly for people who are less experienced in, in using the in doing the technique. Um, we did a, a study looking at how reliable we were at getting the right place 
Um, and I was in the right place about 80 percent of the time as the experienced person. Um, but people who were less experienced were in the right place between five and 20 percent. And th this study was done on um, horses after euthanasia. So um, they they were very still. They stayed very still, very well behaved. My 80 percent is on those is not 80 percent on um, a nice, live and happy clinical patient. Our recent work shows um, where you're confident in your diagnosis of trigeminal mediated head shaking. Actually, response to nerve block doesn't predict treatment outcome. And that's another reason to maybe not do the nerve block. So when do we do a nerve block? So your horse has to be head shaking consistently. It's got to be pretty bad. It's got to be an exercise because it becomes a nice, reliable test. We're maybe not 100 percent sure. So maybe they're not completely classic. Maybe they've got another problem going alongside and it's hard to tease them out. Everyone's aware that it might not give us an answer and they're aware of the risks which are there. They're quite low, but they are certainly there. And we are, we normally get some side effects, although they're usually quite mild, sweaty faces, that kind of thing. Um, but they, they can potentially be worse. So we've got to do a risk benefit um, analysis, which we do, we do as a dialogue with you as the owner and decide together. So hopefully you're not too squeamish about long needles, um, but this is a very long needle um, going down to our nerve. The horse does have local anaesthetic in the skin, actually, which is um, one of the reasons it doesn't really mind. And then we put some local anaesthetic in. So this guy, classic trigeminal mediated head shaker. And but we had good reason for testing this guy, which I, I mean, I won't go into just for time, but um, we did do a tether, the nerve block on him. And here he is after the nerve block, proving quite nicely that he was shaking his head because his face hurt. Um, what it doesn't tell us is why his face hurt, but then we run the rest of the tests. What are the rest of the tests? So in horses, either where we prove face pain or we suspect face pain, um, we want to find out, is there any what we call gross pathology? So any problem which can be a cause for face pain. And sometimes you find abnormalities and you're not sure of their relevance, but you might need to treat them and see if a head shaking resolves. If it doesn't, then you may end up with a diagnosis of trigeminal mediated head shaking. So what are our further diagnostics? Clinical exam, and sometimes we find things there that may lead us to do other tests. Um, but as a standard, we'll do a clinical exam, upper respiratory tract and guttural pouch endoscopy, um, an ophthalmic exam, an oral exam, a CT scan. And at the moment, we're taking blood and urine. What we're not quite sure um, is how to interpret the results, but we're building um, our knowledge in that area. Um, and certainly where anything is abnormal, we can look at that. So a few um, exams going on here. That's looking in the mouth with a mouth scope, doing a CT scan. I think the CT is amazing. And just to finish up with a case. So um, this little man, um, she presented with a gradual onset of head shaking, aged 14, vertical head shaking, no nasal irritation. It started about 20 minutes into exercise and her owners didn't lunge it, so we didn't know if she did it at any exercise. She brought in some videos. Um, we had a watch of those. I wanted to still see what she was like on the lunge, but she didn't do any head shaking in the hospital, but, but sometimes they don't. Um, so at this stage, I was like, well, she could be trigeminal mediated, but there's a few things that don't fit. So no nasal irritation, gradual onset. They, they can be, but they are more commonly acute. Bang, one day I've become a trigeminal mediated head shaker. 14, it's a bit old, um, but it's not impossible. And they were unclear on, a, on results of a butte trial. And that's not uncommon because horses are shaped worse one day than the other anyway. Um, and it can be really hard to be sure if it's um, because of the butte or because the horse was a bit better that day anyway. So we were still on the fence, really, whether or not she could have trigeminal mediated head shaking or not. But when I was talking about this with the owner, she said, oh, well, I did buy her four years ago in Ireland um, and she was passported as 10, which is why I think she's 14. Um, but obviously her passport was done only two weeks before she was purchased. So the owner was already aware that potentially she was a bit older. Um, and when we looked in her mouth, we thought she's probably 18 plus, probably 20. And on CT, we, we found what's called very little reserve crown. So if she was a, a, a normal 14 year old, and bear in mind that obviously horses are all different, she'd have two to three times as much um, tooth in that CT scan. 
um, as she actually did. So we thought she was probably relatively elderly and actually related to that in her um, what's called a hyoid apparatus that sort of attaches her tongue to her head. Um, she had marked um, arthritis, which is here um, signed with the little green arrows, and it was really angry um, and active and very likely to be causing significant pain, um, particularly perhaps if she's been um, she started this after about 20 minutes of exercise. You know, she's taking a contact um, at that point. I would imagine she would start to feel pain. You can operate on these horses, but we thought, well, let's see. We weren't sure if she'd responded to Butte. Let's see if we put her on Butte for a bit longer um, and make sure she's worked every day. Um, let's see if we can decide if she's OK or not. And actually on Butte, she has done brilliantly. Blood levels needed to get to a certain place where we had to sort of do a loading dose and then keep her stable on the Butte. And she's been absolutely fine. And at her age, that's a great outcome. Um, we don't need to operate on, on every case to feel that we've we've had a success. She can be managed very successfully that way. So how do we diagnose trigeminal mediated head shaking? They might respond to a nerve block and there's no pathology. Or they don't respond to a nerve block. We can't do it or we decide not to do it, which is actually the majority of cases we decide not to do it. But there's no pathology and there's a high index of suspicion that that's what they've got. And maybe in the future we'll be doing somatosensory evade potential. We should have a high index of suspicion from history and clinical signs. It is worth a thorough investigation, but just beware, any diagnosis of exclusion has limitations.